My name is Deacon Adam Conk, and I live in St. Martinville, Louisiana, along with my wife Mary Ann and nine beautiful children. And I serve the parish of St. Martin de Tours as the deacon for the past two years. Grew up as the youngest of five in a faithful Catholic large family, what I thought was large at the time. Now I have nine, so I don't know. Seems medium-sized now. My name is Mary Ann Conk. I was raised in a Catholic family. I'm the youngest of four. When I was young, I had an aunt who had a big family. I really admired it. And so I kind of imagined myself getting married and to have a big family. God ended up blessing me with just that. When I imagined my own family one day, it was always a big family because our home experience was a very happy one. We grew up in the church. My dad is a church musician. I became a church musician. My mom was very involved in church and in catechesis. My big, happy, joyful family that I grew up in certainly inspired and had an impact on my family as I became an adult. There was a time in college where I, I thought I'd, I would end up in religious life. I thought that's how God could make me holy, but I know that God called me to this life, and there are ways that I've grown that I know could only have happened by being a mother of nine children. I knew from an early age that I wanted to jump into my vocation as soon as possible. My first big discernment was with the priesthood, and it was pretty clear in that discernment that God did not want me to do that. He made it clear through prayer, through spiritual direction, and I had to come to the terms with the fact that my best friend was a woman, Mary Ann, whom I'm married to today. She was discerning religious life, I was discerning the priesthood, and so when I realized that God did not want me to pursue priesthood, I have this best friend that's a woman, I should discern what God wants there. And we got engaged six months in, married nine months later, and that was 16 years ago. But we were close friends three years before we ever became romantic. And I think that really was God building the foundation for our marriage. And in fact, the six months prior to our dating, we were literally, literally each other's best friends. She was praying novenas for me to St. John Vianney that I could be the great priest. And I was praying for her that she finds the right religious community to belong to. And that's how God laid the foundation for our marriage. And we've been close friends all 16 years. There are difficulties in marriages, sure. There are tough decisions to be made. There are disagreements to get through. But there hasn't been one day that we haven't ended the day as friends or even experienced the day as friends. I remember the day I met Mary Ann. So I was walking through Our Lady of Wisdom Catholic Student Center on the campus of the University of Louisiana at Lafayette. I was 18, freshman. And I'm walking through the halls and I hear this voice. It was Mary Ann singing before I decided to propose that we date. We would spend a lot of time Cajun dancing, and that's how we got to know each other even better. When we were young and dating and thinking about marriage, I think we did what typical young people do. We thought through all the questions, how many kids, how will we school them? But there was a definite point about a month before the wedding where it was on my heart very heavily, and it resonated with Mary Ann, that I was about to embark on marriage. And one of the essential things about marriage is children. The only thing I'll ever do with our marriage that lasts forever are the kids we have. They'll last for eternity. And right after marriage, we got pregnant two weeks in. And every two years since then, we have another child. And so this is a great blessing. We have five boys and four girls, so it's pretty even. And the age range is pretty spread out too, which is a great recipe for, for conflict and for disagreements. And so we do have this kind of set pattern of how to do that, of resolving conflict. And it takes a good 10, 12, 20 years to learn it, right? It's actually a pretty simple system, but it takes re repetition, repetition. Thankfully, there's always an opportunity, opportunity. <laughs> to keep it going. We have a saying in the house, youngest first. It's just the principle of the prefer preferential option for the poor, right? So the, the more vulnerable one, the one who can't get the resource for themselves, they have preferential treatment. We find the freedom of the gospel in very practical ways so that the kids learn how to live in a very practical way. So as they get older, the same rules apply. Thomas is our oldest, and as soon as he was old enough to understand this, we told him, look, straight up, we're making all our mistakes on you, but we love you, and we're growing together. So mom and dad are gonna grow up as parents, you're gonna grow up as a child. We have this special relationship with him for that reason, and he has a lot of mercy on us as we make our mistakes, especially now that he's a teenager. He knows we've never raised teenagers before. It's an interesting relationship with him, and he is very talented. Mm -hmm. He's talented musically, he's talented intellectually, he's very devout. 
child. He loves the Lord. You know, there's a lot to be proud of in Thomas, mm -hmm. but he's our only oldest. Every time a new member of the Kong family comes around and is born, it's always a blessing because that's another soul that, you know, I can help uh, bring to heaven. Challenges to live in a big family are, uh, it's noisy all the time. So it's hard to get some quiet time. So with my dad being a deacon and serving at the parish, we're like we're pretty involved with in a in the church. Being the oldest brother is always fun. Mary is the second mom. She understands how to take care of children. Mary has a lot of gifts. Mary bakes, Mary sews. She'll put her hand to anything. She likes to try new things. She likes to be artistic. She likes to paint. But she also understands what it is to live with children. <laughs> she understands disciplining them. And you know, she's only 13 years old. It's nice to help raise younger children. It's also nice to have an older brother to kind of be your friend. I'm glad that I'm being raised Catholic. I do believe that this is the true faith, and my parents are great examples for me. I'm glad that I get to go to Mass every Sunday. It's just wonderful to feel the Lord inside of you. I think it's important to have big, joyful Catholic families to kind of show people the, a good model of a family, because sometimes it's hard for families sometimes to kind of get along with each other. So it's important to have kind of that good relationship. John is a more contemplative child, always has been. He thinks deeply about everything, and he loves to design things. He likes to work with me on things. One day he invented um, the real lawnmower in his mind. He'd never seen one, but he was like, you know what, I bet we could, as we were, he was struggling to cut the grass and pulling the chain and starting, he was like, I bet we can do this without an engine. It would look like this. And I was like, that is, that already exists. But he's always thinking about how to do things better, um, thinking through things. He's. Hilarious. He's also very docile. Not that he always does it perfectly, but he, he just sort of understands that, okay, somebody has to make a decision and we just have to go with it. Yeah, he's a, he's a kind gentleman of a man. I'd like to be like that one day. <laughs> he's great with his younger siblings. He's a great brother. Having a big family is nice because everybody's happy and there's a lot of people to help out doing things. I'm glad to be in a Catholic family because oh, we pray a lot and get a lot of grace. We go to Mass, we receive communion, and that's really great. Bernadette is a very pious girl. She's always been that way. She loves to pray. Her first communion seemed almost mystical. It was beautiful. She has an artistic side mm -hmm. that's very strong. She takes life seriously, but not herself too seriously. You know, we've prayed about all the kids' names, but hers was the clearest from the Lord from the get-go, name of Bernadette. And I think she's lived up to that. Bernadette asks a lot of questions. Um, oftentimes, once the house is kind of quiet and I find myself alone for a few moments, Bernadette will come find me and have a question. She wants to understand things, and so she's always She's always questioning, she's always thinking. It's good to be part of a big family because you can always find someone to play with. When I go to communion at Mass, I'm very happy because I receive the God of the universe. My favorite saint is Saint Therese because she always did little things for Jesus and she always loved doing little chores and stuff to help out. I love the Blessed Virgin Mary very much. And without her, Jesus wouldn't be born. And, 
and loves life. She's very self-motivated. She's a great helper. She's really quick to offer herself. I'll do it. I'll try. I'll show me how to do it. You know, or I'll help. I'll take the baby. Yeah, she's always had a heart at least twice as big as her body. As soon as she could. She I means she loves so much and she loves people and she talks so much, which is great. And she wants to be a mom from very young. In fact, of all the kids, she probably said that the earliest yeah. and meant it the most. Like she loves, thinks she wants to be like you, you know, she, like she loves the life we live. She loves people. Everything is exciting to Anne. I like having a lot of siblings because to play and stuff. I like being Catholic because of communion, because you're receiving Jesus. My favorite saint is Saint Anne because she has my name and she's the grandmother of Jesus and my confirmation saint. Joseph is just so strong and fierce. He was the one that taught me how to fix so many things that he broke. I mean, I learned how to fix so many items that I didn't know before because of Joseph. We learned how to keep kids inside a home much better because he would want to get out and explore. And he was just always so strong and stocky. And he's a fierce, fierce mm -hmm. little boy, but, uh, but such a big heart too. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's hilarious. He's smart. He's a confident child. He's confident in what he's doing and what he's playing and what he's imagining. He owns it and he's confident. I love my family, they play a lot, and sometimes we fight. I can't wait to receive communion because I chew the body of Jesus, and it's so great. Nine kids, wow. Actually, I, I can't wait to have a 10th kid. Elizabeth. She's our little princess. She's four. She's not a very needy child because she's just really content to play. She's always ready to go off and just go find somebody to play with. And I think she's really happy in her life. She's so creative in her stories, in her questions, and the way she explains things. Just hilarious and creative. And her mind is just non nonstop spectacular. She's always just in awe of things and so much energy, which is great. I'm glad I live in a Catholic family. My favorite thing is Mary because she runs with my sister Mary and she's the mom of Jesus. My favorite prayer is nighttime prayer because it's not that long. Paul is fun. He's our toddler, and he likes to learn. He picks up songs like that. He's always singing a new song. Yeah, you think the eighth child would uh, not feel like they're the boss, but Paul feels like he's the boss. He likes to be polite. He likes to be affectionate. He likes to imitate. Yeah, one of his favorite things to do is follow me around and do what I'm doing, or, or his brothers around do what they're doing. And uh, sometimes with the actual tools <laughs> before I can catch him, and uh, he's fine. But um, most of the time he's imitating us with a stick or something yeah. like that. Steven is nine months old, and as far as nine month old goes, I think he just sees all his siblings doing things and he wants to go do it, and so he's just ready to roll. And he, he's very happy when he's happy, very sad when he's hungry until he gets eating. You know, it's, it's a beautiful thing to provide Steven with such a full house, and that his life is full of a lot of people that love him, a lot of arms to pick him up, mm -hmm. a lot of people to get him out of danger or when he's sad to, to hold him. And so that's been a great blessing to see mm -hmm. little Steven. He has lots of caretakers. We do have three children we lost to miscarriage. Uh, Claire, who 
taught us that lesson of grief and probably in the deepest sense possible of how God's plan is going to be better than our plan. Mm -hmm. We had to really believe that with Claire. Matthew and Blaze were our two other miscarriages. And I think having lost children during pregnancy, it taught me a different level of gratitude. I always, you know, loved my children and I loved having many children, but that was still just this complaint, you know, almost wanting to feel cynical sometimes when I was really pushed to my limit. And having lost children during pregnancy, I think, um, kind of stripped me of that. You know, like, because you realize there's another option than having the child. And you realize having the child is always better. With as many dirty diapers as you'll change, and as many times as they'll cry, and as many mama, mama, mama moments that you're going to hear, it's better that way than the alternative. So those three children taught me to have a deeper gratitude and to um, really mind what I say and think about having children in general. Our life would not be possible if the older children did not take some responsibilities in the home and even for the younger. So we learned this pretty early on and so we, we call it the buddy system. We pair an older child with a younger child to be a buddy. Through the buddy system, uh, we have kind of like little second parents in the home and they each get one buddy. So it's not like they have five kids to care for, but they have one. And as the older child has cared for so many needs for the younger child, it has really created a bond between those two children, which for one concern of having a big family is how will everyone get the love and attention and concern that they need? Well, one way is through their older sibling that's been paired with them because that older sibling gives them that personal attention and it makes our life possible. And it's a beautiful thing to see the kids grow up with responsibility for younger children, especially babies, because they know what that's like. I grew up in a house with music. My dad was a musician, and so music was very natural to me. I enjoyed it, but I also followed him in doing music for the church. So he was a church musician, and now my kids do. So at least once a week, usually more often than that, we all pick up instruments and play a lot of music together. Morning time is time for silent prayer and I have little prayer journals that we fill out. And once that time for quiet prayer ends, we'll pray morning prayer from the Liturgy of the Hours. Of course, as a deacon, I'm obligated, but as much as we can, we do that as a family. Also in the morning for the younger ones, they'll, um, I encourage them to do their morning offering. Offering your work to Jesus? Are you offering your joys and your sufferings? In the evenings, we pray a rosary, and then we do an examination of conscience. We thank God for some grace for the day and then say we're sorry for some sin we committed that day. And we sing the Marian Antiphon of the season. So right now it's the Salve Regina. Open my lips. Come let us worship the Lord, fount of all wisdom. The most important reason we pray is that we want our kids to know God. We want them to know God loves them. We want them to know God is always near to them, that God cares about what they need, about what they're feeling that God forgives them when they repent. And this is all possible through prayer, through a daily, routine, normal communication with their Father. Our prayer is often imperfect. It's often loud. But it's important for us to instill in them that we will pray. We will put the time in. We will put the effort in. We will turn toward the Lord. And so this logic of gratitude as part of a relationship with God who's given us so many things. And it's difficult for a lot of years, and that's a struggle we hear from a lot of families. But it's totally worth it because that's relationship, that's life. Attending Mass is a little different for us with him serving as a deacon. It's important to know that we're all there with God, even if everybody's kind of wiggly and it's hard to pay attention. But it does get easier over time, and I think the key has been to go often. So daily Mass has made Sunday Mass much easier. It becomes more familiar. The kids can see what's expected of them. Having older children in the pew with the younger children is probably the biggest factor there, where they see older kid behaving and praying and participating. This is probably one of the 
biggest hurdles for your families, Catholic families, to think about their life together as a family and having lots of kids is like, how we're going to actually do this. It's going to be tough. It's going to be a struggle, sure. But it's also beautiful sometimes. And sometimes all the stars align and all the kids are behaving Somebody themselves. Somebody falls asleep. Yeah. It is just beautiful. <laughs> so you live for those moments. When and you have kids five and under, everybody's going to act like a toddler. But when you have teenagers in the pew, then even the younger ones start acting a little more mature and a little, they have that example. There's something about being together as a family that a bigger family is kind of the icon of, of just all being together. And so people thank us for doing that. And they say, don't stop, you know. We've also had some dirty eyes or oh, some sure. comments that, you know, people were not pleased that children <laughs> in the church, that's okay. The church is, a mother of our kids too. It's been a great experience and I, I do recommend every family go to mass together and go often and just struggle a bit. It's gonna be okay. I think there's something to being content. I think this is the spiritual life. I know we will go and we will be wiggly and noisy and we are gonna struggle to get through it and I'm happy with that. And I'm just gonna go expecting it and I'm gonna enjoy my time at Holy Mass through this struggle. There's something to, you know, having a lot of children and having a lot of difficulties at times and just being happy with it. The biggest surprise of our married life together over 16 years has been my call to the diaconate. None of us saw it coming. I certainly didn't see it coming. So the first big question was, how could the Lord be calling me to something that would make it harder to raise the family he's called me to raise? If, I, if the diaconate would ever happen, I thought it would be when I was much older, while my kids are grown up. Well, so there's a lot of formation when you're becoming a deacon, a lot of time for both me and Marianne. And she would bring the baby along. She was pregnant, go into all those things. We'd have the baby in most of the classes, and it just worked. I've been ordained for three years, I don't think one day has gone by where I felt like things were in conflict, where I couldn't meet the needs of my family because I was meeting the needs of the parish. I learned how to manage this through formation. So as a family, we are constantly raising adult humans. Everything we do as a family, eating meals, praying, that's all part of a formation and an education. For us, schooling is not an extra thing we do or a bonus or some other element to who we are as a family, but it's built into who we are. So we're constantly learning and growing as people is just part of our life. Obviously, Marianne is home during the day, and so a lot of the formal learning will fall on her mostly. But when I come home, it's, it's been interesting to see how the kids want to gravitate towards bigger questions over dinner. Like, hey, I had this question because I was reading this from the gospel today, or I was reading this in science. And so we're able to have family discussions or wonderful educational moments, you know. As a teacher, and I've taught in Catholic school for many years, you strive for your students to be able to participate in that kind of conversation where they are engaging with an idea or with a concept in a group of people and thinking deeply about them. This happens on an almost daily basis here, just as part of our family. And it's not like a separate time, it's, it can happen anytime. So our, our homeschooling is really just family life. It's great that everybody's involved. Everybody in the family knows what's going on. <laughs> you know, if we wanna raise saints, if we wanna raise people who love the Lord and His church, us as parents, we have to assume that role as primary educator. For us, it looks like homeschooling until high school, and then we send our oldest to high school to join a greater community of faith beyond the home so that they can learn that. But however it's done, parents, we have to take on that responsibility. We love doing that in our home. It's definitely one of the ways that having a big family is possible. Homeschooling is very cheap. Costs you everything except yeah. money. <laughs> it's interesting how, as a parent, when you love your children and you consider what it is to love them through not the best behaviors and you're trying to be patient and you're trying to be understanding and it's those times when I'm able to actually like sit back and reflect on that experience. I just really think the Lord has spoken to me in those times of um, communicating His love to me in our marriage, experiencing the love from my husband, you know, from seeing that attention and love and care come from a human 
I've grown in that way through my married life. Knowing that if God is giving us a child, He's not gonna not take care of that child. And it's not gonna look the way that we think it will, but there's no doubt God won't provide for that baby. And as our family grew, God just provided the next thing we needed. God's only gonna give me the grace for nine children because He's given me the nine children. <laughs> God just provides it, and you trust and you wait for Him to show you how He's going to provide. I think when you have your first child, like first introduced to parenthood, sometimes you don't have the confidence that the way things are going is right. The lack of sleep and the not knowing what to do for each new thing that this human is presenting to you, it is right and it is good and you are in a good place. And we don't know if this is right. I don't know what I can let go. Uh-huh, that's good. That's right, that's how it should be. If you wanna have a big and joyful Catholic family, you have to have friends who have big, joyful Catholic families. So we've been blessed with relationships with families that are 10, 15, sometimes 20 years down the road from us who've been through it all that we can talk through with, we can get advice from. Without that, I don't think we would be okay today or nearly as joyful. To be big is great, but to be big and joyful takes community, takes the church. Part of that is the, the children growing older. I remember for years, I prayed for help and I never imagined that help with the children would come from the children, <laughs> but they grow up and they can do things. They become the help. Wow, Lord, I didn't realize you would answer my prayer that way. So no matter how many kids you have, the most important thing about your family is your marriage. And the greatest gift to give to your kids are mom and dad love each other and they're really good friends. And so life gets busy. And as you have that first child, don't let it get so busy that you're neglecting your relationship as a couple. And make sure that relationship never gets neglected, no matter how many kids you have. You can't be joyful unless you're joyfully married first. Parenthood is a fruit of marriage, not the other way around. Mm -hmm. The sacrament is matrimony. And everything you need to be parents is in this sacrament, but it comes from your marriage. When we go to Mass, we always sit right next to each other. We don't put a kid in between us. It'd be much easier to like spread them out and divide and conquer, but we we're gonna take the less convenient route to show our kids that we are always together and that this relationship is most important. Show them that you're gonna stay together no matter what. Don't let them divide you. <laughs> stay together. We're the Kong family, and we are Joyfully Bay!